Hey everyone, so today I wanted to pay a tribute to uh, soldiers who crossed the ocean to come to France in order to fight and suffer there. We are going to review Sabaton's song A Ghost in the Trenches about Francis Pega Magabo. Let's put it that way, if trench warfare was hell on earth, then Francis was a horseman of the apocalypse. He was a Canadian Aboriginal, which means that he was a second rank citizen in his country. He endured a life of hardness before he enlisted during World War I. His mother even died when giving birth to him. And uh, what he achieved during the war is, uh, is beyond everything. He was the most decorated uh, native Canadian in the military history of Canada. He served as a sniper and made 378 victims and captured 300 German soldiers. So let's go! So, uh, into battle, the gas has them pinned. Uh, his first encounter with the trench world is in Ypres. And there he endures the first gas attack of the war. I guess it's a make or break experience for anyone. Then his, this soldier invoked the spirits of the wind. When he was working as a sailor prior to World War I, he received a protective talisman and the legend say that it was what gave him such a confidence in its superpowers. <laughs> So uh, makes his way from trench to trench alone, um, moving undetected, is incredibly skilled for sneaking in the trenches. He has an exceptional eyesight and then is designed as the sniper of its battalion. Moving undetected. Almost the whole war, uh, he made it home, but uh, at some point he started to endure uh, severe PTSD. 
Um, and why so? He served as a sniper, and when you're a sniper, uh, you're like a hunter, and you hunt for a specific man, you choose him, you see his face before you kill him. So that at some point, uh, it must be, you know, it must take something of your humanity. It makes me remember about the life of a Soviet sniper. I heard a couple years ago and never forget about uh, this. So her name was Rosa Shaina. Uh, she killed something like 60 German soldiers. And uh, at some point she said that she felt that she didn't have a heart anymore because every man she killed took a part of her humanity. And then she died and her mother said, yeah, maybe it's better this way. Yeah, so the Ross rifle was uh, very criticized for... Um, it was the rifle used by the Canadian Expeditionary Force and it proved very deficient, especially for French warfare with problems such as being too heavy too big to uh, be used in a, you know, a small confined area such as a trench. Uh, your bayonet could fall from your cannon, which is annoying when you're charging your enemy. Uh, and it was unreliable to the extent where at the Ypres battle, many Canadians just dropped this rifle and took the rifles from British who were either died or injured. If you're an Aboriginal Canadian, making it to the rank of Sergeant Major is impressive. Final stuff I wanted to say about this incredible warrior and maybe his most iconic story. One night he managed to infiltrate a German trench dormitory, bypassing the guards. Then he cut up, then he managed to cut up pieces of the uniforms of the German soldiers who were asleep. Uh, I imagine what kind of surprise it was for them when they woke up. Finally, he came back to Canada alive. He involved himself in politics and represented the First Nations there. He worked as a guard in an ammunition factory and finally died in 1952. And I hope he has some peace and happiness during his life. So anyway, thank you guys for listening. Uh, talk to you soon. Don't hesitate to let me know if you would like me to cuddle over Sabaton songs. And as always, have a very nice day. Bye.